Hello everyone. Some of you have asked in the comments how I thought solar overlanding with the F-150 Lightning would work. So I thought I'd make another video to go into that in a little more detail. So first, some assumptions about the capabilities of the Lightning, efficiency, cargo capacity, and so on. The F-150 Lightning may be the only electric truck that will ever be built with so much storage. In fact, for this specific use case, where you want to overland and need extra storage room for solar panels, batteries, and charging equipment, the F-150 Lightning may be the best truck ever built from the factory. All the other trucks that are out or will be coming out over the next few years are ground up EV designs, which is great. That's what we should have. But in a ground up EV design made to be aerodynamic and efficient, the front space is going to be smaller. All of the extra storage allows the F-150 Lightning to have the same cargo space as the ICE version, plus almost 15 cubic feet of additional space in the front. The extra space can easily carry all the solar panels and charging equipment you would need for overlanding on solar, and I plan on demonstrating this. Or, if the panels are too large for the front, items that the panels would displace in the bed can be moved to the front. Using some quick math, 2,000 watts of solar panels times five hours per day of charging would yield 10 kilowatt hours of generated power per day. Six to 800 watts of solar panels can be mounted on the roof and tent enclosure or toenail cover. Technically, these panels could be configured to store energy or charge the main traction battery while driving, but I'm not going to include that in my calculations for now. 1,200 to 1,400 additional watts of solar panels can be set up in a folding array deployable at a campsite. So again, any day spent in the same location could yield 10 kilowatt hours of energy. Most of the range testing being posted online from people who have received their trucks is showing an efficiency of two miles per kilowatt hour. So 10 kilowatt hours collected times two miles per kilowatt hour would equal 20 miles per day of gained range from solar. Now there is some operational overhead that needs to be accounted for, such as running a stove and lights at a camp. But for now, I'm leaving that out just as I have left out the extra energy you would pick up from the permanently mounted panels while traveling. In planning a test case scenario, I used the ballpark assumption of getting 20 miles per day from solar. The test case trip I came up with is a real life example of a trip I would take. In fact, I have done parts of this trip already. And it's definitely the first big trip I would like to do in the Lightning once I have all the solar panels and gear set up. I'll provide a detailed step-by-step -step account of this trip towards the end of the video, but the short description is a trip starting in Yuma, Arizona, spending several days going through the Kofa National Wildlife Refuge, followed by a celebratory evening dancing under the stars on the playa in Death Valley National Monument. The trip would take 12 days from the beginning to end, derive 13% of its energy required from solar, and leave nothing behind, not even fumes. I estimate the trip is five days longer than could be done in an ICE vehicle, but those extra days are not time spent waiting for the truck to be recharged. The extra time can be spent exploring the area by foot, or electric bike while the energy is being captured. The only true extra time would be the additional time spent at charging stations because it's true. Right now, it does take more time to refill an EV compared to an equivalent ICE vehicle. So for the details of the test scenario trip, the trip starts out at the Electrify America charging station in Yuma, Arizona. This is a station that anyone could get to using the normal trip navigation of the vehicle. Likewise, the end of the trip is at the Electrify America charging station in Olancha, California, a location from which anyone would be able to navigate back home using the built-in route planning software in the vehicle. The points in between are what I had to figure out, and I ended up using this really great site I found called www.overlandtrailguides.com. I'll put a link below. I'm not affiliated with them in any way, and I'm not making any money from the link. I just found their site really helpful with maps and video logs of some of their trips. So after fully charging in Yuma, the route goes north on 95 before heading east into the Yuma Proving Grounds. The camp for the first day will be at the Little White Tanks camping spot, about 53 miles from Yuma. This will leave the remaining range on the truck at 176 miles, 
which will be supplemented the next day with solar for a gain of 20 miles. I want to say at this point that I made an effort to never let the state of charge fall below 100 miles of range because you never know when uh, there could be a medical emergency or a flash flood and you need to get 100 miles away quickly. Day three has us starting out with 196 miles of range and traveling to the Hoodoo Cabin camping area for a distance of 48 miles. Again, we let the solar array charge the vehicle back up by 20 miles on the fourth day while we explored the surrounding mountains and trails. Day five has us travel a fairly short distance up to the Chola Tank Camping Area, only 10 miles. This is followed by exploring the surrounding area and charging on day six to get us back up to a range of 179 miles. Day seven has us going north and back down to get to the Kofa Monument for lunch. We end the day at the Crystal Rock Collection Area for a total distance of 35 and a half miles and a remaining range of 143.6 miles. Since I'm not sure if the Crystal Rock Collection Area is the most scenic camping area of the trip, and we have enough range at this point, we skip solar charging on day eight and instead go to the Skull Rock Camping Area, 27.8 miles away. We spend day nine exploring all around this area and gaining 20 miles of solar charging to bring us back up to a range of 126 miles. With this remaining range, we can easily start out on our journey to Death Valley the next day as we leave the Kofa National Wildlife Refuge and head to Quartzsite for the 350 kilowatt chargers they have there. From Quartzsite, we go to Needles for a charging stop and then Baker, where we fully charge for the remaining 124 miles to Hanupa Canyon in Death Valley, where we set up our lights, play music, and dance under the stars to close out day 10. We take one more optional full day to recover at Hanupa Canyon and head out to Elancha on day 12 from where we head home. If we don't do the optional day to add solar charging, we stop briefly at one of the six free chargers at the oasis of Death Valley to gain enough range to make it to Elancha. Well, that's it for now. Hope to see you in the next video. And if you like this idea of solar travel, then hit the like button, subscribe, and leave your comments below. Thanks for watching.